stake out in North Canterbury. At the moment, I'm requesting you to stay if you don't, I'll lock you up for obstruction. Navy divers on a mine hunt have a close encounter. That shark was bigger than mine. Though. Nothing a, a fin or a knife can't get rid of. And a flat tyre leads to a disappointing discovery. Yeah, they just got the punch in. That's the worst catch we've had this weekend. It's a chilly, windy day in North Canterbury, but the weather conditions won't deter power <laughs> gatherers. It was like it on Tuesday as well, so uh, yeah, we seem to be getting a few more northwest at the moment. With gatherers continually helping themselves to undersized power and crayfish, stocks are unable to replenish, leaving the North Canterbury area almost fished out. To avoid getting blown right off the cliff top, Lyndon takes shelter in his four-wheel drive and checks in with fellow fishery officer Jesse, who alerts him to a group of gatherers over the hill. Whilst he's been sitting there, a uh, group of um, people have come down. They've started diving for hard to say whether it's mussels or power at this stage. Um, there's, he reckons there's about six of them. There's uh, two or three of them in the water, so um, he's just been watching them. If we get to see all they smell a rat, then they can dump what they've got. So we don't want to sort of turn up there and go, ha, you know? It's sort of like you, you, you've just got to sort of keep them in view all the time so you keep an eye on what they're doing so that you know that they haven't dumped any of their fish. Just need to have a quick squeeze over the hill again just to see what's going on. The pressure's on as Lyndon tries to get ahead of the group without arousing their suspicion. He then checks in with offsider Jesse. What's in the pram? Yeah, they a pram or a wheelchair or something. Is that where they've got the power in? Yeah. And there's another green bag. Yeah, roger that. We'll head on down. From his vantage point, Jesse suspects the group are heading towards the car park. The officers arrange to meet and intercept them before they reach their car. Here you go, mate. Ministry of Fisheries. What have you got in your bag there? That looks good. Yeah, it's closed. Is side. it? Yeah. I'll just have a quick look, eh? How many you get, do you reckon? Oh, I don't know, maybe about 50. About 50? Yeah, between us. You guys got a measuring gauge? Do <laughs> you got anything to measure? Uh, I don't think <coughs> you're using sort of the... Oh, we have the hand, uh, mate. Only three of the group have been gathering, and between them they've gathered well over 70 power. Sadly, they're all undersized. Yeah, that's undersized. That's undersized. They're all undersized, OK? That's a bit of an issue. Can you get our family some food? Well, you can. It's just got to be legally done. Though. Legally done. Yeah. yeah. OK, well, so was your last name? Oh, I'm not saying anything. You've got to read me my rights. No, just at the moment, I'm just asking you what your name is. The guys aren't cooperating with the officers. Stay here, please. So Jesse has to make the situation crystal clear. At the moment, I'm requesting you to stay. If you don't, I'll lock you up for obstruction. Do you understand that? Absolutely. Yeah. After a bit of cajoling, they finally provide their details. But the officers still need to check that these pram pushers haven't given them incorrect information. Yeah, Roger comms, I need a QP on a individual, please. So far, the, um, the first gentleman I spoke to gave me a false name. Um, he since come back and told me that, uh, that he'd given me a false name, so yeah, he, he coughed up with his real one. Um, I'm just doing a check on it now. And, um, once we've done that, they're, uh, they'll be free to go. All the power that they've got appears to be undersized at this stage. They've got excess numbers of power, and uh, so you yeah, will be taking it and returning it to the scene. And then we'll just deal with this bag as well. All right, fellas. We'll, um, we'll just come and check your car, just to make sure <laughs> you're hard who you say you are. You've got some ideas set of the car? Yeah. yeah. The group walks back up to where their cars are parked without the confiscated power. That's going with Jesse and Lyndon in the fisheries ute. As the offenders park their cars in front of the fisheries warning sign, they can't plead ignorance. The fact that they've parked right beside the fisheries sign, that's ironic, really. Down at the beach, Jesse and Lyndon count and measure the power before putting them back into the sea. They can only hope some of them will survive. Two of the offenders were fined $750 each, while the youth was given a warning. Located in the Central Pacific, New Caledonia was a strategic outpost during World War II. 
70 years on, two New Zealand Navy vessels, along with mine countermeasures teams from Australia, France and the US, are joining forces for a clean-up mission known as Operation Lagoon Minex 2010. <laughs> To protect the island from wartime invasion, 12 defensive minefields were laid around the island and the surrounding lagoon, but they were sunk at the end of the war. With the area now listed as a World Heritage Site and with large volumes of marine traffic entering the area, the sunken mines are now a major safety issue. In essence, removing the, the threat that was laid some 70 years ago um, to make the area better and therefore creating a safer environment for both maritime traffic and recreational divers, fishermen, etc. To locate the sunken mines, a piece of equipment with a sonar scanner is used called a remus. It resembles a mini submarine and is referred to as the fish. The mine countermeasures team are retrieving the fish from its latest mission. This just kind of spirals its way up to the surface. There it is. The data retrieved will be analysed to see if it has located any mines. The next stage will be to actually download the sonar files, which is what we're really interested in for um, detecting mines. It will take most of the night for the data to be downloaded before it can be revealed if the fish has found any mines. Early next morning, the NZ Navy and the Royal Australian Navy Remus team analyse the data collected by the fish. This is the sort of thing we're looking out for, um, generally sort of scored out in a uh, pit where the tide the currents run past and that hollowed out underneath it. I'm confident, um, but this is quite a deep mine. It's about 38 metres, so the diver's got very limited time down there. Um, but uh, I'd be pretty content that he's going down on a, uh, a live mine here, and um, one that can be moved and disposed of. Over the day, the fish locates 24 more contacts. These will either be mines or non-mines, which could be coral or rock. Dawn on day four and the dive team prepare to investigate the contacts that the fish has located to determine if they're mines. A potentially hazardous mission like this requires specialised diving equipment. Here we've got our Viper SC semi-closed rebreather. This is used in the RNZN uh, for the primary job of mine clearance diving to a maximum depth of 54 metres. Um, starting here with our gas, we've got our onboard gas supply, which is two flasks with a wet volume of 5.7 litres and they're charged to uh, 200 bar. From there, the gas travels up into our regulator, and the pressure here is 13.5 bar, which is delivered to our inline metering valve, and there's also a bypass, which just goes to our inhalation counter lung. The Viper set is no ordinary dive set. It's a non-magnetic set, which allows us to dive on influence mines, and also um, mines that are picked up, mines that pick up a, a magnetic signature. At a depth of 24 metres, the divers strike success. Most of the contacts are indeed mines. Divers gone down and reacquired it and verified that it is a mine, so um, MTN guys will be happy. It's number 30 for the ship, so the ship will be happy. And now they're just moving on to the next target. Only an hour into the dive... Another one. And the divers have located five contacts, two mines and three non-mines. One of the non-mines proves to be a large rock. It's nice to be here and actually doing it for real and finding real, real ordnance, real mines. Gives the guys a bit of a buzz. By the time the dive teams swap over, Team A have found a total of seven mines. So Team Bravo have a lot to live up to. However, after less than ten minutes, panic strikes. Came across a below. Came across a shark, but they've managed to scare the shark away and they're getting back in. And no doubt when they come back, the shark will be four metres and was attacking them and all sorts, but we'll see. <laughs> that shark was bigger than mine, though. <laughs> what happened, buddy? A couple of sharks. Nothing a fin or a knife can't get rid of. See Gary come flying in the boat. Yeah. The shark proved a dangerous diversion on what's been a successful day. The guys had approximately 36 contacts to dive on. We managed to find 16 mines. The priority tomorrow is to enter the final phase of the mission and detonate the mines. The plan for tomorrow is we'll leave, leave here about 4.30. At 6 a.m. we'll jump in the water, uh, get the lay of the seabed, um, the, the current, the tidal situation, all those things. So at 6.30 we can pop it to the surface. We then tow it out. It's approximately 2,500 metres to the demolition zone. We then place a charge around it and uh, blow it up. 
The 461 kg mine will be detonated using a remote control timer inside a mine lifting bag. Similar to a balloon, the bag will capture the fragments if the mine explodes early. But before that happens, the team of nine divers need to make the explosives. Then we'll join them together and we'll just wrap it up in glare wrap and it'll be all ready to go. It's just like making a bread. And once everything's connected up, um, we get the guys to put the fire on or ignite the safety fuse. And there's a five minute lead time, uh, ignites the detonator, functions the um, detonating cord, functions the main charge, and with any luck, and I'm sure this will happen tomorrow, it'll uh, detonate the mine. It's the last day of the mission, and the divers are poised to seek and destroy the mine. OK, guys, uh, listen up. Just been on the phone to CTG about today's activities. Unfortunately, today's countermining uh, activity or serial is, is, is cancelled. Basically, the French are concerned um, operationally they haven't got enough vessels in the water to maintain maritime security, and also there's a strong push regarding the environmental impact of a, a countermine in the lagoon. So unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, today's activity is cancelled. While the dive team are disappointed, Operation Lagoon Minex 2010 continues to dive for one last day, giving them over 40 mines to destroy at a later date, making the waters of New Caledonia finally safe. It's Waitangi weekend and fishery officers Sean and Tony are doing routine checks along the Kaikoura coast when they come across a van with a flat tire. We'll just get the catch out, mate, and we'll check that while you're getting that off. Oh, I haven't messed it up yet. Well, they're in your wagon, though. Yeah, no, it's just that we got a flatty. Yeah, well, we'll just check them anyway. Yeah, you know, You don't want to jump over top of you, that's all? Yeah. The guy's not worried about Sean and Tony climbing over him, and he doesn't seem too concerned about what they find. Anything in the bucket up here? Nah. You can check just though. Just in there. Yeah. I just might tip them into... Into the bin. Here. But when Sean tips the catch bag into the bin, it's obvious there are far too many power. Right, now, have you guys got any uh, cash me permit? Sorry. Have you got a cash me permit or anything like that? No. OK. Have you got any, any idea how many powers you got on board here? Hey, what's we'll that? Oh. Have you got any idea how many powers you got on board? No, I don't. No. OK. Who, who gathered the powers? Uh, us, us two and one other. Where's the other person? He's gone. Claiming an extra diver is a common ploy, but if there was one here, he seems to have left his mates in the lurch. You didn't help you punch your puncher or anything? Yeah, they just got the puncher. But you were parked here, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah. OK. Well, I'll have to go through and count them. Right. OK. We'll see them in the day. This guy is clearly far more interested in fixing his puncture than talking to Enfish about his excess power. And what's the daily limit for powers? What's the daily limit for powers? Ten. Ten. But knowing the limits obviously made no difference. It looks as though these two have taken everything they could find. There's 58 powers, guys. And they're in your they're in your van? Yeah, I understand that, yeah. They haven't just taken too many power, there are also a number that are under size. The legal limit is 125 millimetres. 123. Yep. 124. 117. That's, that's greed, guys. Oh, yeah, we know what it's like. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. That's the worst catch we've had this weekend, with people taking it. Yep. Arithmetic is obviously not their best subject. If that had just a few more power, they would have had more than three times the legal limit, which carries a harsh penalty. You're allowed 10? Yeah. 58, it's, it's nearly three times. The good news is that the men will be able to keep their quota of 20 power. We'll keep, let them have 20. So cut, and, cut ones are the ones that we'll let them keep. The bad news is this is going to be a very expensive day on the coast for both of them. Between the two of you, it's going to be 750 bucks each because you've got undersized powers and you've, and you've got such a huge quantity. Okay, so that's, that's, the, that's the worst.
that is the case scenario. There's no. Oh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay, but just, just want to tell me. At this point, the men are probably wishing they'd yeah. joined the AA. It would have been a lot cheaper. Yeah, otherwise you would have got away. No, I was trying to get. Yeah, I know, I know, but you wouldn't have been here and we wouldn't have. Yeah, I got it. We didn't even know how many. Okay, I appreciate that. Well, hey, if we just go back here and I'll just take a quick notebook statement on here. Okay. While Sean takes their statements, the excess power are put back beneath the low water line. I'm just going to write up these infringement notices and oh, give them to you, yeah. and that'll be uh, the end of the matter, OK? But no, I'll carry on. You, 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 you carry on doing that, mate, and I'll, I'll want to just pop out of the sun. Um, yep. Hey, Mark, you, you had a jack in the back of that truck, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Can I have you? We'll probably will have one, so it won't be behind the, the back seat. Sean's offer to help isn't actually out of the goodness of his heart. We'll help them uh, put their tyre on because that means they're out of the area once they go. Any fisheries offending there, please, mate? While they wait, a check with fisheries reveals that one of the guys has been caught before. If it happens again, he'll go to court. Guys, what you did is, is not nice, and taking that many powers is completely and totally unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So here's your fines, um, get you any questions. Your rights are on the back, so if you wanted to uh, have a look at anything, the rights are all on the back, OK? Otherwise, it's got to be paid at Westpac Bank. OK? So are you guys off now? Yeah. OK. Right, we'll see ya. Both offenders were fined $750 for possession of excess and undersized power. Just north of Auckland on the Whangaparoa Peninsula, Julian and a team of fishery officers have set up a roadblock near Army Bay. The random checkpoint is essential to ensure catch sizes and bag limits are within the regulations set out by the Ministry of Fisheries. Basically, we have a quarter mile bay just down the road here. It's quite a popular beach for um, shellfish gatherers. Um, there's also two very popular boat ramps in the area. Um, that is Gulf Harbour and um, Army Bay, where you know, a lot of guys um, launch from. And what we're expecting to find is a variety of uh, fish, or shellfish, um, kinners, cockles, um, snapper. The limit on cockles is 50. What have you guys got to show me? Um, probably not even 50 kinners and 300 cockles. 300 cockles. And who's been collecting those cockles? Who's all of you? Well, about five cars. About five cars? OK, mate. What I'll do is, can I get you to move forward a bit, please? So where's all the seafood, mate? Is it in your car? No, Hey? OK. All right, so have you guys got seafood as well, mate? OK. This group of day trippers are from Naru Wahia, which is two hours drive south of Auckland. They may not be aware that fishery regulations can vary from area to area. That's your cockles, eh? Oh, no. OK. So you should have, what, 150 cockles? Yep. Oh, no, no, no. Cockles in here? OK. So in this bucket here, is it just the three of you? That have collected it. Yeah. Okay. And the kinners at the bottom. Oh, okay. So you got kinners on the bottom. Oh, no problem. Let's do a quick count, eh? 36, 36. The Naru Awahia party wait patiently as Julian tallies up. 300. 434. 434 cockles is well over the daily limit of 50 per person, meaning this is not a minor offence. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be fair and reasonable in the fact that, um, all right, it's your car. All right, um, I've counted your pile, um, a pile of 149 there, OK, which puts you under three times the daily limit. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to uh, interview the three of you, OK, all right, and take your details, all right? So there could be a little bit of a, a, little bit of a hold up here. But um, unfortunately, all right, this is what I have to do, OK? Have you got a driver's licence, please? The Kinner Catch checks out OK. Drop one. But the cockle count is a clear breach of regulations. All this could have been avoided by a simple call to the local Ministry of Fisheries office or a glance at their website before setting out. The likely outcome for that scenario was uh, 
um, two people may face prosecution um, and uh, one person may face a fine.